All right, Algebra 1, we are going to be starting your uh, Chapter 1 quiz review. I'm going to get my pen ready to go here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my work. So if you just want to look at this part, um, you can, but this is from page 26. I'm going to start scrolling. You pause when you need to. So we have questions 1 through 8. Pause when you need to or rewind. And here is 9 and 10. Okay. And then on the next page, again, pause where you need to or rewind it. 11 through 14. Sorry for the bell. <laughs> Making this at school. You'll hear another one here in just a minute. 15 through 18. And then 19. So just record, you can um, check the ones that you did. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do though is I'm going to work through each question. So you, you can fast forward to the questions you may need help with. And I'm going to start with number one. So we're going to solve the equation. I'm going to subtract 9 and number one from both sides to get x is equal to negative 2. For number two, I'm going to add 3.8 to both sides. I'm using a new stylus here, so just bear with me as we get this going. 8.6 plus 3.8 is 12.4, so that is equal to z for number 2. Number 3, I should divide by negative 12 on both sides to get r by itself. Sorry, I should be crossing these out when they're canceling out. My bad. Um, negative, our 60 divided by negative 12 is negative 5, so negative 5 is equal to r. Number 4, you're supposed to divide by 3 fourths um, to cancel out the multiplying by 3 fourths, but dividing by 3 fourths is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal, 4 thirds. So I'm going to multiply by 4 thirds on both sides. These will cancel out over here. So I'm just left with P. And then 18, I'm going to write 18 over 1 times 4 thirds. I'm going to cancel, cross cancel. 3 divided by 3 is 1. And then 18 divided by 3 is 6. So all I got to do is 6 times 4 and 1 times 1 on the bottom, which is 24 over 1 or 24. Okay? Solving the equations, these are our multiple step equations. I'm going to add 3 to both sides first to number 15. I get 2m is equal to 16. And then I'm going to divide both sides by 2 to get m is equal to 8. Okay, number 6. This one's kind of tricky, so be careful here. I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides. And I'm going to get 5 minus 10, which is negative 5, is equal to negative v. Then to get v... Um, positive, I need to divide both sides by negative 1, so that v is positive, and negative 5 divided by negative 1 is positive 5. Okay, number 7, I would notice I have some like terms, 7w plus 8w, that is 15w, plus 2, and then equals 5 still, and then I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides to get 3 equals 15w, and then what I need to do here is just to get... Uh, w by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 15, and notice it says 3 over 15 or 3 divided by 15. I can just simplify that fraction to 1 fifth. If you wrote 0.2, that's the same thing, but I like to just simplify if it's a fraction. Number 8, I also can need to combine like terms as fir at first, so I'm with negative 21a plus 21a, that's going to give me 7a minus 6 is equal to negative 10.2. And then I'm going to add 6 to both sides, being very careful, lining up my decimals. Remember, you can use a calculator for this quiz. 7a is equal to negative 10.2 plus 6. That is negative 4.2. And then I'm going to just divide both sides by 7 to get a is equal to negative 0.6. Okay. Hopefully we're doing well so far. Here comes the doozies where you're having to distribute and then combine like terms, and then use your two steps. We're distributing a negative 3, or a minus 3. So I'm going to have 2k minus 6k. Oops, I always write x here for some reason. So 2k minus 6k plus 9 is equal to 45. 2k minus 6k, I'm going to go ahead and combine that to get negative 4k. So negative 4k plus 9 is equal to 45. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides to get negative 4k is equal to 36. Divide both sides by negative 4, Whoa. and k is equal to negative 9. 
Oops. I haven't figured out how to uh, quickly um, erase here, so my apologies on that. For number 10, we should also be distributing the 1 fifth, so I'm going to end up with 68 is equal to 1 fifth of 20 is 4, so 4x, and then 1 fifth of 50 is 10, so 4x plus 10 and then plus 2. I know I can combine these two, 10 and 2, so I'll have 68 is equal to 4x plus 12, and then I'm going to subtract 12, goodness, sorry for my sloppy handwriting. So I'll get 68 minus 12, that's going to give me 56. Come on, multiply. Here we go. 56 is equal to 4x. Divide both sides by 4. x is equal to 14. Okay? 11. This is when you're, so this section is when you have uh, variables on both sides. Remember your main goal is just to get all variables to one side. So I'm going to move my c, my c's to the left. And then I'm also going to move my ones or my constants to the right, okay? 3c minus c, or 3c minus 1c is equal to, let's look at k, that's 1c, is equal to 2c. Plus 1 minus 1 cancels out to give me 0. c minus c cancels out to give me 0. And then here you might want to, some of you get in the habit of just doing this, canceling out. But maybe think about this, well, if I don't have anything over here and everything is canceled out, it's still 0 on this side. Dividing both sides by 2 out, c is equal to 0 for number 11. Again, over here for number 12, I'm going to move my um, variables to the right just because I want to keep those positives, but when I subtract my constants, minus 64, those are going to end up with negatives, and that's okay. Um, remember, it doesn't matter if you move your variables to the left or, vari or to the right, just as long as you use the correct operations. Negative 8 minus 64, that's going to give me negative 72. And then 3n plus 5n is 8n, dividing both sides by 8. Negative 72 divided by 8 will give me negative 9. Okay, flip my paper over here and keep going. 13, distributing the 2 first. So 2 times 8q is 16q. 2 times minus 5 is minus 10 or negative 10 and that's all equal to 4q. Since I already have 4q by itself, I'm going to go ahead and scooch my 16 over with the 4q, so I'm going to subtract 16q to both sides. 16s cancel out, I get negative 10 is equal to negative 12q, and then I'm going to divide by negative 12. Again, here's where you can either divide 10 by 12 and you'll get a repeating decimal. Um, I just like to look at it and say 10 over 12 is a fraction and can be simplified to a positive 5 6. Okay, because a negative divided by negative gives you a positive. 14, I've got double distribution. So 9y, 9 distributing to minus 4 is minus 36, minus 7y. And then over here, 5 times 3y is 15y, 5 times minus 2 is minus 10. Let's go ahead and combine like terms on this left side. 9y minus 7y is 2y. 2y minus 36 equals 15y minus 10. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move my, let's do my constants to the right this time. So I'm going to add 36 to the right side and subtract 15y on the left side. I'm kind of doing my double steps here. If you want to do it one step at a time, you can. 2y minus 15y is negative 13y. And then negative 10 plus 36 is 26. So now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 13. And y is equal to negative 2 for number 14. Okay? 15, moving right along. Again, we're distributing first. So I'll have 4g plus 32 equals 7 plus 4g. Okay? Be careful what's going to happen here. I'm going to move my g's all to the left. So minus 4g, minus 4g, and then I'm going to move my constant of 32 to the right. Minus 32, minus 32. Okay? These 4g's are going to cancel out, and this 32 is going to cancel out. So I'm left with 0 on the left side. And then 7 minus 32, that's going to give me negative 25. 
0 is not equal to negative 25, so we're going to say for number 15, this one is a no solution as your answer. You could have looked right back up here and notice 4g plus 32 is equal to 7 plus 4g. In order for this to work, notice how you have 4g and a 4g, 32 and a 7, so this is not the exact same thing. So you could automatically say there's no solution up there for 15. Let's go into 16 though, let's go and distribute. Negative 4 to a negative 5h is a positive 20h, and negative 4 to another minus 4 is a positive 16. So 20h plus 16 is equal to 20h plus 16. Look at that. Do you notice how both of these are equal already? So that means we can say they're an infinite solution. Infinite solutions as your answer. I will go ahead and work it out just so you can see that how that works. If I subtract 16 from both sides to get my constants over on the right and subtract 20h on both sides to get all my variables on the left, everything cancels out. 20h minus 20h, 16 minus 16, that's a 0. 20h minus 20h, 16 minus 16, that's a 0. Because 0 is equal to 0, I can say that there's infinite solutions there. Or you can say all real numbers could work here. Okay? Going on to 17. So here's your word problem. Um, for this one, your miles are determined by taking the seconds and dividing it by 5. So we're just trying to figure out how many seconds would we be counting if it was 2 miles away. So I'm just going to replace m with 2 and then solve for s. So s divided by 5. To undo that, I'm going to multiply by 5 on both sides. These fives can cancel out since dividing by 5 and timesing by 5 are opposite, um, whatchamacallit, opposite operations or inverse operations, and then 5 times 2 is 10, so we should be counting 10 seconds um, for a thunderstorm that is 2 miles away. 18 was kind of tricky. You want to hang three equally sized travel posters on a wall that's equal to 15 feet long, okay? If it's equaling to 15 feet long um, and you want equal amount of space in between and there's 3 feet taken away on each side, so I'm going to go ahead and say that there is 12 feet left over, okay? And then for this one as well, think about there is two spaces. Here's an X and here's an X. We want that to be evenly spaced. So that's 2X plus the remaining 12 feet should be equal to 15, okay? I'm going to go ahead and subtract 12 from both sides. So I get 2x is equal to 3. I'm going to scooch this down. And then divide by 2. x is equal to 3 halves, or you could say 1 and 1 half, or 1.5. All the same thing. Okay? So that was 18. The last one is number 19. After how many hours of painting are the total costs the same? So what you have to do is just basically set up Studio A's equation equal to Studio B's equation. So that would be the same uh, price. So I'm going to do 10 for Studio A plus $8 per hour. So I'll just do 8H is equal to Studio B's price of $16 for the base plus $6 per hour, 6H. So this is part A. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6H to get it over here on the left side. And then I'll need to move this 10 over on the right side, so minus 10. Okay, so 6h minus 6h cancels out. 16 minus 10 is 6. 8h minus 6h is 2h. And then 10 minus 10 is 0. Divide both sides by 2. So after three hours, you're paying the same price for the studio. Maybe one studio has a better atmosphere, whatever. So after three hours, you still are using the same amount of time. But how would Studio B increasing their hourly fee by $2? How would that affect your answer in Part A? So you essentially just do the same equation, except now instead of $6 per hour, they're going to charge $8 per hour. So let's see how that looks. So 10 plus 8H is equal to 16 plus 8H. Okay, and you're going to notice something right away when you're trying to move over variables to either the left or the right side. Crossing out, crossing out, you're left with 10 and then 16 on one side, and these do not match, so there's no solution here. And since there's no solution, that means the prices 
will never be the same. Okay, so then you just got to figure out, well, Studio A would probably be the better choice there, or it'd be cheaper to go there. Okay, that's going to conclude your quiz review. Just make sure you're studying. Re go back and watch some questions you might have missed. Try some questions that you missed again. Um, and good luck on your quiz tomorrow. Bye. Thanks for tuning in.